everybody got their mic with them. And I uh, would like to ask the city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Chavelle? Here. Assistant Mayor Hansen? Here. Councilor Grasso? Here. Councilor Long? Here. Councilor Hines? Here. Councilor Penelakis? Here. Councilor Whitehouse? Here. Councilor Marconi? Here. Councilor St. Laurent? Here. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise for a moment of silent prayer. And then we will have the students here tonight uh, to give the Pledge of Allegiance and it will be led off by that. Uh, also, we end at God Bless America. our students, uh, which will be taking over the city March 27th, the Student Government Day. And I am going to be the first one to start, and I want to introduce our mayor, who will be Zach Ron. And uh, Zach gave me kind of a bio, and it's pretty long, so I'll just kind of abbreviate it. <laughs> Boy, he's done a lot of things, which is just swell. I, the education, he went right through the Portsmouth school system, Portsmouth High, Portsmouth Middle School, and New Franklin. Uh, then for his activities, student government, 9-12, uh, National Honor Society, Portsmouth High School Clifford Yearbook, Junior World Council, uh, and this one really touched me. He was a volunteer down at Crossroads which is uh, 10 hours a week, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, drama Department, Fall Production, Greater Portsmouth Education Council, Volunteer for Martha Fuller Clark, the Congress Campaign, Peer Leadership, and Into the Sports, uh, Varsity Swimming, 9 to, uh, 9 to 12, Captain, 11 to 12, uh, Seacoast Lacrosse, 9, Great Bay Rowing, 11 to 12. And he received just numerous awards. So I'm going to stop there because I could go on for the next hour. But he is one great kid. Thanks. <laughs> Your Honor, could he stand up so everyone could see him? Yep. Zach, stand up. Wait here, everybody. <laughs> Now we're going to go right down the list, so we'll go right to the assistant mayor and just follow your sheet right along. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Emily Hopkins, who is the <laughs> power behind the council. She's the assistant mayor, um, and she's a senior. Her activities include uh, field hockey uh, as a goalie, lacrosse, uh, young women's leadership. Uh, she's a member of the steering committee there, yearbook staff. Uh, working in the kitchen in Crossroads, Mayor, uh, manager, manager of the kitchen staff, a born leader here, coached elementary school boys basketball team as assistant coach, uh, tutor for children at Crossroads Homeless Shelter, uh, worked in elementary school art classes as a teacher and a teacher's assistant, uh, and then after school she worked at Water Country as an entry team cashier. I uh, worked for Hannaford Brothers as a cashier and, oh, my favorite place, Ray's Clam Hut. Uh, I'd like to introduce Emily Hopkins. Em Emily uh, is trying to decide whether she wants to go to Georgetown or Georgetown uh, or George Washington University, and she's going to be majoring in international politics. Good evening. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be able to introduce to you Maria Nukas. Maria has gone through the Portsmouth school system. She's 16 years old and is a sophomore at Portsmouth High School. She plays three varsity sports, basketball, volleyball, and softball. She's president of the sophomore class at Portsmouth High School and also is on highest honors. 
Maria is part of peer uh, mediation and peer leadership. And her goal is to go to Dartmouth to major in either business or law. Maria? Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Amir Terry, who is a junior at uh, Portsmouth High School. Uh, his favorite topic in school is history. He likes reading, uh, mostly about revolutionary heroes. Che Guevara is one of his heroes. Uh, he's a runner, captain of the winter track team. Uh, he does something called aggressive inline skating, uh, works at the Edgewood Center, and he's a fine young gentleman. Amir Terry. Uh, I want to take this great opportunity to introduce to you Heather Weeks uh, from a very prominent family in Greenland. And Heather, among her involvements, uh, is in music, percussion ensemble, the band, the choir, and she plans to major in dairy science uh, and the agricultural economics of that dairy science. Uh, and I'm sure that some of you have read about a uh, small fire out at the farm, uh, but uh, Heather will have her animals back in and uh, giving them the good care that she has learned to give. Uh, I'm very proud to uh, introduce a young lady who really knows what she intends to be as she grows up uh, and especially involved in uh, something that we all need, and that is uh, good dairy science and good uh, animal uh, care. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Heather to this group. Uh, the young lady with me tonight's name is Susan Dane and attends Portsmouth High. She is a junior and plans on going on to college. She would like to double major in international law and business. She would also like to minor in photography. She's looking at schools like Dartmouth, Kobe, and U UConn, as well as the University of New Hampshire and the University of Vermont. She would also like to take a couple months off before college to travel. At the high school, she works on the yearbook, and this year she was assistant editor. She also plays soccer for the school. She works at BJ's Code House in Rye during the summer and partway through the school year. On the weekend, she babysits for her sister. She also helps her twin brother work on their car and four wheelers. She also helps him to plow and shovel driveway during the winter. I think she's quite a young lady. Susan Dane. Your Honor, members of the City Council, I'd like to introduce Patrick Curry. Now, Patrick and I had a long conversation last night, and it seems as though I've known Patrick all my life. Patrick is a sophomore. He is a very good scholar in school and holds a 3.3 average and above. He uh, is a participant of three major sports. He's involved in varsity hockey, varsity baseball, and varsity football. His main ambition is to get a scholarship in baseball and attend a southern university where he can play baseball nine months out of the year. He hopes to be a major in journalism at some university and someday he hopes to work for a, a large metropolitan newspaper. He's a very fine gentleman and I'd like to introduce to you Patrick Curry. Your Honor and fellow counselors and large audience, glad to see the chairs are filled up. I'd like to introduce Courtney Parkinson. She is a junior. She works part-time at the Cafe Brioche. Her extracurricular activities are field hockey, varsity 9 to 11, lacrosse, horseback riding, interact club, student council, coach for three to five grades in field hockey, assistant in the second grade class, volunteer at soup kitchens at the Salvation Army, 
and a ma her major concern for her future is to be an architect. Her dad is in the Merchant Marines and her mother is a retired accountant. Please welcome Courtney Parkinson. Good evening. Um, my representative uh, on the council is a sophomore from the high school. Um, her sports are cheerleading and tennis, uh, and her goals are to be a medical researcher or a lawyer. I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Wong. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. It's a pleasure to introduce uh, Spencer Phil. Uh, Spencer is a senior this year, and he has had high honors all four years, uh, student council all four years, uh, treasurer of the class of 2003, freshman and sophomore year, student council treasurer senior year, Interact, uh, business manager of future business leaders of America. His, uh, his uh, sports activities include varsity soccer, varsity track, varsity lacrosse, uh, City League Basketball. He's also in the Interact Club. Also, he's been captain of the Seacoast Lacrosse team. I'd like to introduce uh, Spencer Phil. <clears throat> Our student uh, city attorney this year is a very confident and articulate young woman named Sarah Sanger. Uh, Sarah is a Portsmouth resident senior at Portsmouth High School. Her uh, list of activities at Portsmouth High School is probably literally too long uh, to read. However, it includes diverse things. Uh, sports, swimming and tennis, uh, culture, piano and voice, and governmental, uh, student rep, uh, National Honor Society, Junior World Council, secretary and treasurer of the class. Or maybe that's of the Junior World Council. Um, Sarah doesn't really know where she wants to go to college uh, next year, but she knows what she wants to have happen after that's done. She wants to be a civil rights lawyer, which means the type of lawyer that we ordinarily see threatening us from over there somewhere. Uh, she she uh, uh, has a more immediate goal of uh, going to Russia next month to uh, our sister city over there, which I can never pronounce, Severodvinsk, Severo, you know the one, and uh, uh, to study the effects of drinking water uh, pollution. Uh, Sarah Sanger. My student counterpart this year is Lori Garlin. Um, she is from Greenland and she is a senior at Portsmouth High School. She's a member of Interact, Junior World Council, and Young Women's Leadership. She currently volunteers at the Pines at the Edgewood Center and works part-time at the Downtown Gap. She is undecided at which college she will attend but plans on majoring in business and marketing. Last year for Student Government Day, she was a city counselor. May I introduce Lori Gollum. Thank you all very much, and I want to welcome the students here tonight, and we'll all be on board with you uh, on March 27th. We'll be in here to give you a hard time. <laughs> uh, now we're down to a proclamation, um, and I'm going to ask the assistant mayor to read it, Alec Hansen, uh, American Red Cross Month. Thank you, Madam Mayor. City Council Chamber, City Hall, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, a proclamation. Whereas the work of the American Red Cross and its Great Bay Chapter continue to be extremely valuable to citizens of our area, and whereas the Great Bay Chapter is part of the Red Cross partnership with the federal government and various emergency planning agencies establishing a Together We Prepare campaign, and whereas the campaign includes five simple steps to empower our citizens to protect themselves and keep our community safer. And whereas this plan calls upon each of us to make a plan, build a kit, get trained, volunteer, and give blood. And whereas last year alone, over 4,600 people took time to learn life-saving skills such as first aid, CPR, and how to use 
a defibrillator through the Great Bay chapter, and whereas more than 9,000 area volunteers gave the gift of life by donating blood through the Great Bay chapter, and now includes Portsmouth and 38 other communities, and whereas more than 148 U.S. military families received direct help from the Great Bay chapter, keeping them connected in times of great personal sorrow and joy. Now, therefore, I, Evelyn Sorrell, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth, join with all members of the City Council to applaud and recognize the selfless, uh, dicta selfless dictation, dedication of generations of Red Crossers by proclaiming the month of March 2003 as American Red Cross Month and call upon the citizens of the City of Portsmouth to become partners in preparedness for the Great Bay Chapter of the American Red Cross and become active participants in advancing the noble mission of the Red Cross. Given with my hand and seal in the City of Portsmouth on this first day of March 2003, Evelyn Sorrell, Mayor of the City of Portsmouth. Thank you, Alex. Do I have anyone here tonight to accept this proclamation? I will pass it then to our city attorney. He's very involved with the Red Cross. Now we are down to for our Mayor's Award for our little championship people. And we're going to start off uh, with the girls team. And as you come up, I would appreciate it if you would line right up here so the people at home can see you. And uh, we're congratulating them tonight for placing second in the 2003 Division B girls basketball team for the New Franklin School Elementary. And uh, I would like to stay here now. Connie is here, uh, the principal of New Franklin. And I hear she never misses a game and she roots like I used to root for my kids. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have uh, the city manager give off the names. You got them? Okay. Very good. And then you come right up. Okay. The first uh, individual is Brittany Anania. Could you come forward, Brittany? Next is uh, Christy Barstow. Next is uh, Brenda Cash. Next is Krista Donaldson. We have Rosa Greeley. Casey Kruger, <laughs> Hannah Leach, <laughs> Molly Lynn Scott, <laughs> Samantha Malay, <laughs> Danielle Semprini, <laughs> Cynthia Scott. Kathleen McMaster, Katie O'Malley, Satia Muslim, Catherine Van Wert, Danielle Zamarchi, and the coaches. Yeah. And the coaches. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> All right. There we are. You stand right there now, please. And now we're going to do the coaches. What was that? Well, you didn't get one. What was your name? What was it? Well, somebody's got. Nope. Oh. Oh, yeah, see, you're going too fast, John. <laughs> uh, this is Cynthia's. Oh, she's not here, so maybe you can give it to your uh, coach. And uh, you've got a pin. All right. Are we all set? Are we ready to go into the coach? Okay. 
Okay. Are you ready, Your Honor? Well, I'm ready. All right, Anne Marie Kane. And Kevin Semprini. And I'd like to announce that we will be having the John Darrow uh, uh, kids come in uh, at our next meeting, the 31st. Okay, Kev? Can I get you to take this one for the one that was asked tonight? Cynthia Scott. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. Right. All right, John. We're off now. This is the uh, the boys team, and we're congratulating them for their achievement as the 2003 Division B champions from the New Franklin School. The first individual is Anthony Allen. Chris Allen. Colton Burnett. Justin Darrow. Ben Hayward. Ryan Ignachuk. David Keith. Alex Love. Jonathan Love. Angus McDonald. Jack McCachron. Billy Miller. Michael Montville. Zachary O'Donnell. Patrick Osborne. down to the coaches and I'm going to have one of them take these uh, certificates and also uh, some pins. Okay, I'll set John. Uh, Mike McDonald. Okay. Uh, then, Mike, I'm going to have you take these, okay? And also the pen. Okay? How's that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank
So I think we'll uh, hold off before we go on with the meeting in case the kiddos want to school home. School day tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Now we're down to a presentation, and I would like to introduce our deputy uh, city manager, uh, and he's going to speak on the resolution to support House Bill 717. Uh, Ted Jankowski. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the council. Uh, I've been asked tonight to just briefly review um, our effort um, to repeal the statewide property tax and to reform the education funding system um, here in New Hampshire. Um, I'm going to provide a very brief overview of our efforts and then an update of where we are. And it's exciting, it's, it's important for the public to be aware of where we are. Um, as you recall and, and know very, very well, with the support and leadership of the, the mayor and the city council and the city manager, we've been working hard on this issue for many years now. Um, last summer, we started the effort to come up with our own solution that we've been criticized that we're against the state property tax, but yet did not have our own solution, and now we do. Um, with the efforts of a, a crack team of educational finance experts, national experts, led by Dr. Daphne Kenyon, uh, formerly the president of Josiah Bartlett Center, uh, Dr. Andrew Shosky from the University of Wisconsin, um, and New Hampshire-based economists, uh, led by a legal team um, with Martin Gross, a constitutional lawyer. We put together a terrific proposal that was done in January. Um, and it's a targeted aid proposal that uses the existing resources within the Education Trust Fund, absent without the state property tax. So it's taking sort of a new approach. Rather than trying to provide $3,500 per head to every child in New Hampshire, whether it's Wyndham or Lincoln, it's a new foundation-based system similar to what's utilized in 43 other states. It basically is identifying the educational need on the one side of a community and then measuring that against the fiscal capacity of a community, their ability to raise and also the ability to, to pay for taxes, to pay for education. So rather than providing um, funds to every school child in New Hampshire and every town, it targets the money only to those communities that need it the most. Um, it's tremendously different from the approaches that have been utilized to date. That's the biggest challenge we have, is to convince the legislature that our approach is both legal um, and different than the old approach that we've been fighting with the last few years. Right now, we're the only state in the entire country that we think is required by the courts to fund 100% of an adequate education. But that's really not true. And we point to another model in Massachusetts um, in this regard. It's basically the same gentleman wrote both constitutions. His name is John Adams. And they have a word cherish in their constitution, the same as ours. And they also have proportionate requirements. 
that they are allowed to use a foundation aid approach and target aid only to those communities that need it. So we've slowly been making headway and some exciting things have happened. The first thing that happened was when the governor released his budget and he used our actual targeting aid formulas exactly in his portion of the targeted aid proposal in his budget. The difference between the governor's and ours is he only targets $5 million in 04. We target 100% of $416 million phased in over time. So it's significantly different. We provide a lot more money to the communities that need it, to the Claremonts, to the Allenstowns and the others. And we provide and actually reduce funds that are going to some of the wealthiest communities in the state on the basis of income. So a substantially different approach. Um, second most important thing that happened uh, was two weeks ago in the Ways and Means Committee. A very significant vote in the Ways and Means, Means, Means Committee of 15 to 6 overwhelmingly supported our proposal, which is now House Bill 717. And it was very interesting um, to watch sort of bipartisan su uh, support come up for our bill, and the more legislators became educated about it, the more they understood it, the stronger their support. There are now people that are really pushing hard uh, for our proposal that weren't there before. Um, Edmund Genet, um, a representative from Lincoln, a longtime member of our coalition as a selectman, now as a, a freshman legislator, is the prime sponsor of our bill, and he does a very nice job and has been very helpful and supportive. Um, the next most important thing that happened was last week, uh, last Thursday as a matter of fact, when the House on an overwhelming vote, 209 to 135, agreed to send our bill on to the next step of the process, the House Finance Committee will be heard this week. Um, and one thing that did happen was that, as you know, our proposal was a twofold one. It was a targeting aid bill, but also we were recommending a constitutional amendment um, as a guarantee to preclude future legal challenges and to ensure that um, education would be funded uh, on a guaranteed basis in the future, but on a limited basis. Uh, that bill has been held by the Education Committee, um, uh, CACR 13, as it's now known as, and that's good, that's what we wanted. So we can focus on passing the bill by the 1st of July as part of the budget and then work on the constitutional amendment down the road to ensure uh, that our proposal is successful uh, withstands legal challenges in the future. Um, so it's been some important steps that have occurred in the last few weeks and it's exciting. We have a long way to go. There are now basically three proposals that are most actively talked about um, in the legislature that have been moved on to the next step of the process. Uh, there's one by Representatives Hess and Kirk. There's basically a, a Band-Aid approach. It's, it only deals with 04 and 05. It's not a permanent long-term solution. It builds upon the present system and tries to control and cap the cost associated with it. Uh, the other bill is very active, uh, which is now in the, as part of the budget bill, House Bill 2, the so-called trailer bill, um, is the governor's bill. He only targets a small amount and then very similar to the Hess bill, tries to cap the cost of an adequate education in future years and um, attempts to uh, uh, be, give people the same amount of money that they've received this year forever. So we'll see what happens, but this Thursday at 4 o'clock our bill will be heard in the Finance Committee. Um, this Saturday morning at 9.30 will be a subdivision of the uh, Finance Committee, a subcommittee if you would, Division 4, which will be hearing education proposals on, on Saturday morning. So we've come a long way. We're starting to get some um, editorial support from various newspapers uh, throughout the state, uh, which is a very positive thing. Now many of our members because we've been at this so long, it's hard sometimes to, to keep the momentum going and to sort of get your troops excited again, but this is the first time people are really getting excited again in a long time. And a, a large number of our communities now are starting to pass resolutions in support of both House Bill 717 um, and the constitutional amendment to guarantee um, that this system would stay in place in future years. So another town of Rye has passed it um, recently here on the Seacoast. Hampton Falls, Newington's about to. 
uh, Jackson, Alton, some significant communities. Fred Coney has passed a very similar uh, type of resolution, and we're trying to maintain the momentum and push it through. And of course, today it's important to mention that last night the town of Dublin um, also, or tonight the town of Dublin should be passing a very similar resolution uh, in support of uh, 717 and um, CACR 13. So, with that, that's a, a brief overview and encapsulation of our progress to date. And if there's any questions from the council, of course. Any questions of Jeff? Thank you very much, Jeff. Madam Mayor? Yes. Move to suspend the rules and take up item 8A, B1. Under the Mayor? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I'm uh, going to pass this to you, Assistant Mayor, because I'm going to read the resolution and then ask for a vote. The Assistant Mayor has the chair and recognizes the Mayor. In the year of our law, 2003, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, resolution in support of House Bill 717, whereas we, the City Council of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, do hereby express our strong support for the legislation drafted by the Coalition of Communities, of which Portsmouth is a member, to find a long-term sustainable education fund alternate that will target an aid to needy communities and provide equal education opportunities for all school children in New Hampshire. Whereas, we request that our legislative delegation support the targeted A grant legislation, House Bill 717, in all ways possible to ensure that it becomes law. This bill was developed after months, and I mean months, of intensive research and reflects the best available facts and figures in establishing a formula that gradually phases in targeted aid system similar to those used in 40 other states. Whereas, although House Bill 717 can stand alone, we also urge our delegation to support the accompanying constitutional amendment CACR 13 if it comes up for a vote. Whereas we believe these common sense measures should be supported by elected representatives in all, in all available venues, including votes of support in committees and on the floor of the legislation through appearances at hearings by committee, considering these pieces of legislation and by stated support for this legislation during caucuses and their political parties and in individual conversations with fellow legislators. Whereas this package is of utmost importance to the financial future of Portsmouth, all of the coalition communities and our state. And that's a very, very important sentence. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Portsmouth, by its city council, does hereby support the targeted aid grant legislation, House Bill 717, and constitutional amendment C-A-C-R 13. Do I have a second to the mayor's motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? No discussion? Are you ready for the vote? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Turn the chair back over to the mayor. Yes, Bill? Uh, move the minutes of uh, March 3rd, 2003. Second. Second. Okay, I, I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Now we're down to the public comment session. And I will give the rules here tonight. We have 10 speakers. So that means just three minutes apiece 
for each speaker. Uh, our city attorney holds up the thank you sign when your three minutes is up, and I ask that you please sit down. And I will be having uh, the resolution on uh, Nancy uh, for March 31st. I just couldn't do it. My agenda was much too heavy to put it on tonight. Um, all right, now we're down. We're going to start off with uh, Mr. Eckhart and Ecker, I'm sorry, and he is going to talk about city business. Mr. Ecker, 422 Banfield Road. I abut the Girl Scout property and I also abut the Great Bog, and I see you're trying to do all kinds of wonderful things with the Great Bog, with birds in there and animals in there. The only problem is, the only thing you're missing is, you're still letting people going in there and hunt. And you know, some time ago that I came down here with a loaded firearm, I had no intention of hurting anybody here. <laughs> However, in three weeks, Mr. Sullivan got a motion or ordinance passed that someone like me, who's licensed to carry a firearm, couldn't bring a firearm in any public, in any city building. So, you put me at a disadvantage if I could carry money around, I'm not armed. But anyhow, that's beside the point. What, it, what it, this is about is the Great Bog. I mean, that picture right there is, as Rick Hopley, the building inspector, calls my place the Ponderosa, the Acro Ponderosa. You can't tell what I have from the road when you drive by, but I kept it like that pretty much. And at any given time in the last 20 years, since 1958, since I've lived there, I could have shot a deer every year, but I haven't, never. I stopped doing those things when I got out of the, out of the military. I haven't used a firearm since. So I would really like to see you people draft some kind of an ordinance so you have no hunting in the city limits. That is the city limits. I mean, I'm a property owner, I'm a taxpayer, I'm a business person, and for gosh sakes, if you want to keep the great bog like it is and you want to get birds and animals in there, let's, let's get some kind of an ordinance so there's no firearms in the city of Portsmouth. I know people park in the end of John Bohinkle's little dead-end street there, and I know they go in there and hunt. And I know John knows that too, don't you, John? Yes, well, the hunting Right, partner. okay. I wouldn't like that if I was John. So I, I would really hope that you people could do something. And uh, as I said, in three weeks, Mr. Sullivan, the city council, drafted an order and pushed her right through just like that, right? Correct. Correct. So why can't you set up something so that there's no hunting in the city limits? I mean, my God, we don't have much land that's, that's woods anymore anyway. I want to keep my property like it is and keep it like that and keep the animals and keep the birds and all that. And if you're going to do that, let's do it all the way. Thank you very much. And I have Thank a picture. you. It's right here. That's beautiful. They come right up to my backyard, too. Nancy Brown, uh, she's going to speak on peace. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity once again. Um, Mayor Sorrell and Assistant Mayor uh, Hannon and all the student um, government members that are here. This is actually a very critical time in your life and I'm glad that you are here right now. I only wish to speak for a moment. Um, as I stated two weeks ago when uh, Zalita and I presented the resolution, the peace resolution, um, I stand here opposed to U.S. aggressive war on Iraq. This is a sad moment in our history. This is March 17th. Do we call this the eve of war? I stand here ashamed of my government leaders marching towards war as the world continues to say no. I cannot understand in my mind or my heart how we can say to the world, to the people of the world, that their opinion doesn't matter. I also stand here ashamed of my city council members for putting this important issue aside to a later date. Um, if they're talking about the war starting tomorrow, will you still debate it on March 31st? You did not have to approve it if you didn't want to, just that you would have brought it before the public's eye that they could have discussed it here tonight. I believe you have an obligation to speak to this issue now, an obligation to open it up to public discussion. 
before this war begins. And lastly, I um, share with you the names of um, 160 other Portsmouth citizens who join us tonight in asking that you pass this peace resolution and pass it in a timely manner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. The next speaker is my next door neighbor, Sue Madden, and she's going to speak on the peace resolution. Hello. Um, I'm Sue Madden, as Evelyn said. I live next door to Evelyn on 700 Greenland Road. Um, I'm speaking in support of the peace resolution. Um, although the City Council's role is usually related to decisions regarding city business, I believe that as an elected body, you can go beyond your usual role in, in order to speak for the people you represent. Um, for this reason, uh, the Council has a responsibility to review and hopefully pass the peace resolution as a statement from the people of this community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Annie O'Darty, did I pronounce that right? She's going to speak on the uh, uh, peace resolution also. If I didn't pronounce that right, I'm sorry. Yes, you did. Okay. My name is Annie O'Doherty, and I want, I don't have anything prepared especially, but I just want to say as a mother, as a woman, seeing these young children here tonight, I do hope you will give some thought and review quickly the resolution and pass the peace resolution. What's going on in the world is terrifying, and the rest of the countries are, are, are saying that they're against the war in Iraq. Please, please get some thought to this peace resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Uh, the next is Doug Bogan, and he's going to uh, speak on the peace resolution also. Well, Madam Mayor, members of the council, my name is Doug Bogan. I live at 404 Pleasant Street. And um, I wish to speak in support of this uh, resolution before you. Um, I just wanted to give you a sense of the breadth of concern over this issue. Um, this resolution is, is similar to uh, resolutions that have been passed in over 150 cities, towns, and counties throughout the United States. Um, those communities include uh, Portland, Maine, Waterville, Maine, Boston, Massachusetts, Pittsfield, Mass, Liverett, Mass. Don't worry, I won't list the whole list of 150, but uh, um, some of the other cities included on that list are Detroit, Atlanta, New York City, Chicago, Evanston, Illinois, Des Moines, Iowa, Baltimore, Maryland, Newark, New Jersey, Syracuse, New York, Cleveland, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. Now, that's the District of Columbia, not the Congress, but um, give you an idea of some of the breadth of support for this uh, throughout the country. People are um, uh, urging their local officials to support these resolutions, and as we meet here tonight on, on what could be the, the eve of destruction, as the old folk song goes, um, there are uh, these widespread efforts throughout the country to uh, express support for peace. And um, I, I want to, uh, you know, you, you'll hear other moral arguments why this should be done, but I, I'd like to appeal to just basic self-interest why the city should get involved. Um, there are a number of uh, key uh, fiscal issues involved uh, with uh, a war and peace, certainly, uh, with our federal uh, budget and what comes back to the uh, states and to the cities. Um, when we spend uh, what may be $100 billion or more uh, for war, that's taking away from the social uh, programs, the social concerns that we need to uh, address at the local level. Uh, we're seeing uh, ballooning deficits at both the um, state uh, and the federal level, uh, weakening of our economy, increases in unemployment, uh, reductions of vital services uh, that uh, you and other uh, local elected officials uh, need to ensure for our communities, and um, we do urge you to take a stand uh, in support of uh, what the people are calling for. Your constituents want to know where you stand on this issue before the shooting starts. And um, it's been said that uh, there are now um, two superpowers in the world, 
one of course being the United States government, the other being public opinion throughout the world that is opposed to this war. And uh, it's really a shame that um, this resolution can't be acted on tonight um, before the shooting starts, um, but I do urge you to uh, uh, consider it and uh, act on it when you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Peter Rice, and he's going to speak on the library. Good evening, Your Honor, members of the City Council. <clears throat> My name is uh, Peter Pierce Rice. I am not a resident of Portsmouth. That fact notwithstanding, I think you should be aware that no Pierce heir has signed off on the agreement that the Pierce family made with Portsmouth when the land was donated to the city, specifically that the land on which part of the new library will be built, or may be built, will in effect remain as open space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, Lee uh, Caswell, and that they're going to speak on the library too. Good evening. My name is Leah Caswell. I live at 37 South Street. And what I will speak about seems rather unimportant with what's gone before, and I would urge you as well to consider the resolution for peace. Um, what I see with the, the um, present... Yes, well, yes. the public comment session only carries one subject to speak on. All right, then would you negate what I've just said, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Will you take it from the record? Um, I would like to speak for our library. Uh, the present location, as Peter Rice has said, is, I believe, destructive of a number of things. The first is the Pierce Family Trust, which left that land to the city of Portsmouth, the residents of the city of Portsmouth, to be left as parkland into perpetuity, that is forever, not to be a parking lot, not to be a modern library building. I'm also speaking for the preservation of the armory, which is worth, just in speaking in economic terms, $1.8 million that's going to be raised and destroyed, destroying not only history, but a great deal of the financial income that the city is losing. I'd also like to speak for preservation of the library, our library as a second location with a new building built on the Bridge Street lot across the street without underground tunnels, without overground walkways, as this location is, would rebuild the north end. The north end was destroyed 40 years ago. And what we have there now, largely, are parking lots and new buildings modern buildings. Are we going to return the south end, the west end, the south mill pond area to that sacrilege of our city's history? I implore you to preserve, please, the armory, the Pierce Family Trust, the mill pond, the open space of which Portsmouth has only 2% at this time, the ball fields. Rebuild that which has been destroyed by urban renewal and preserve our library. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Graziano, he's speaking on the resolution. Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council members, students, and staff. I read with interest uh, in today's Herald that the City Council on March 31st will hold a uh, City Council meeting to discuss the resolution that's been submitted by 12 uh, Portsmouth residents urging the Bush administration to forego a war on Iraq. Being that it is so late in the month and there are no scheduled council meetings scheduled before the 31st, 
I'm urging a city council member to bring forth a resolution in support of our armed forces and what they are about to do and the way in which they will do it and the hope that their sacrifice will prove to the world once again that freedom in America comes with a price. If there is to be debate in this city, in this council chambers over whether this country goes to war or not, then let there also be debate as to whether this city is willing to support the men and women, and men and women, women who may have to die in this war. I sometimes find it ironic when people talk about mothers and fathers not wanting to send their sons and daughters off to war. And yet these same people never mention what the sons or daughters have to say about it. Having spent 30 years in the armed forces, I can say from experience, worrying about what mom and dad has to say is not foremost in their minds. You have to remember, the Armed Forces of the United States is an all-volunteer force. If this council passes any resolution, it should be one that reflects the majority of what freedom-loving Americans want. And in this time of world crisis, it is to rid the world of an evil man named Saddam Hussein. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Next speaker is Phyllis, and I think that says Albi, but I might be, yes. And she is going to speak on the resolution, too. Mayor, council members, and students. I'm speaking in support of the resolution that has been submitted to you. And I want to remind you of the worldwide opposition uh, to this war. Um, countries, Italy, Germany, Great Britain, many countries in the world, and many people have come to march and to demonstrate to say, we do not want war. Conflict between nations, like conflict between individuals, should be resolved peacefully. That was the purpose, that is the purpose of the United Nations. And a, one country attacking another country is against the charter of the United Nations. Iraq is not a direct threat to the United States. Inspections should be allowed to run their full course. Our country is currently deeply and more quite recently in debt. A war will thrust us deeper into debt, which will take generations uh, to um, reverse. So I urge you to consider this resolution and join the many cities in this country who have done so. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last speaker is Mish, Mishkam, huh? Mitchum, a Davis, and uh, she's going to speak on the resolution. Thank you. My name is Micam Davis. Oh, Micam. I'm a man, Michael. but that's okay. <laughs> I come from Kingfield, Maine, originally, uh, York, Maine, before that, and uh, I'm a resident in Portsmouth for five and a half years now. I'm a founding member of SCARE, which you might have heard of. It's the SECO Citizens Against Ruining Everything. <laughs> and our mission is uh, that we are um, supporters of public advocacy through the promotion and support of nonprofit, or rather public profit organizations which foster community health and awareness. And we say that our efforts depend upon the diversity of perspectives, resources, and talent that are the fabric of our community. And uh, I'm surprised to hear you say that you're putting, or that you have put off the, the, the peace resolution, uh, you know, as an issue this evening, considering it is of the 
Uh, it is very important considering how many people have showed up to speak tonight on that issue and considering the state of our, our, our world right now. Um, we all share a collective tomorrow and uh, we need to foster that. Um, hatred gets planted in action and uh, it comes back. We all know that karma exists, that we reap what we sow and uh, I feel like we're really sowing some dangerous, dangerous seeds right now. So I'm, I'm very fearful, but uh, strong enough to admit that. And uh, I'm really happy to see the young people here tonight, and uh, because they are our tomorrow. They are the voices of our tomorrow, and we need to listen to them. Um, democracy is the spirit of the people, the voice of the people. And um, liberty is access to the truth and the freedom to act on it. So I don't see democracy in this realm. Well, I do, but I don't. And I, I think that we all need to foster democracy. And I'm, I'm really profoundly amazed at our administration's masquerade in the name of democracy, yet they're Republicans. That really baffles me. Um, so. We can all work for peace, but it starts right in the space that we house ourselves. So I pray that you listen to the people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. That ends the public comment session. And now we are down to uh, presentations and considerations of written communications and petitions. The first one being remove requests for sidewalk obstruction licenses for the following businesses with no changes from last year. Fair uh, Skies, one A-frame sign. Lucky Seven Gallery, one A-frame sign. Bagel, uh, Bagel Works, four tables, 12 chairs, and one A-frame sign. Subway, two tables, four chairs, and one A-frame sign. Pierce Gallery, one A-frame sign. What is your wish, Councilors? Your Honor? Yes. I move that uh, we approve these since there's no change from um, last year, and I'd like to basket them all together. Second. Right. Absent any objections, I second that motion. Very good. Any discussion? I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, will you refer this to the city manager of town? Referred it to the city manager. Thank you, Your Honor. And she basketed it all together. Okay, no discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We're down to a request for a sidewalk obstruction license from the 100th restaurant for our 1A frame sign. Your Honor? Yes. I move we accept the new request for the uh, A frame signs at 100 restaurant. Second. Discussion? Uh, uh, yes, Council of it's, it's, it's in reference to the ordinance and A frame signs in general. I'd just like to make a comment. I think we ought to be very careful and we ought to review the ordinance and, and because downtown is getting to the point where A frame signs are appearing two and three places at one business. And I, I don't know what the understanding was in reference to the ordinance. Uh, one entrance, one A-frame sign. I, I, I don't know if that was in effect in the ordinance or not, but I think we ought to take a long, hard look because some businesses are having two and sometimes three. Are we all ready for the vote? Your Honor, uh, Council uh, and with uh, Council Whitehouse's permission, I'd like to also refer this to the city manager with power in case there was some yeah. fine details need to be worked out. Very good. All ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We're down to a letter from Tom Morgan regarding the proposed library on uh, Parrot Avenue, and I will read that before Councilor Whitehouse tells me I should. Do you have to read it? Yes. Honorable, uh, what? Do you have to read it? Yeah. Well, I think we should. <laughs> and um, it's made out to the mayor. Uh, regarding the proposed library on Parrot Avenue. Dear Mayor Sorrell and City Councilors, 
I am writing to express my enthusiasm, support for the con uh, construction of a library at the JFK site. The JFK is situated approximately 200 feet from my back door. I have lived at this location since 1985. I applaud the new library building committee for their hard work and for choosing an excellent site. The committee could easily have chosen a non-controversial site in a remote section of Portsmouth that would have forced library patrons to rely entirely on motor vehicles for access. Instead, the committee chose a site that is but a short walk for the 237 elderly residents of the Feaster and Margison apartment, 558 middle school students, and several hundred other local residents. Maximizing uh, pedestrian access, as this proposal does, lessens congestion in the streets and reduces our reliance on foreign oil. That is good planning. I am confident that you appreciate and support good planning. Build the library at the JFK site. It will be a great asset to our neighborhood and to the city. Yours truly, Tom Morgan, who lives at 39 Richards Avenue in Portsmouth. Move to accept and place on file. Your Second. Honor. Um, uh, Councilor Grasso. Yes, I'd also like to uh, have a copy of this go to uh, uh, John O'Leary. Very good. Thank you. Are we all ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Now we're down to the city manager, and John has four items that require action. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The first item deals with the establishment of a work session regarding Downtown Business Association's uh, Associates proposal for a pedestrian pilot program on Market Street. And as you recall at the last meeting, uh, the mayor and I uh, were proposing work session and uh, there were some issues with the dates. So we were asked to come back for this meeting and the mayor and I are suggesting Monday, April 7th at 6.30 p.m. to discuss the Downtown Business Association's proposal for a pedestrian pilot program on Market Street. So move. Uh, Second. Uh, Discussion? April 7th. It's a Monday evening. I would just like to say that everyone will be invited to this. We will be sending notices out to all of the downtown businesses and also the Downtown Business Association, the Chamber of Commerce, and possibly Pro Portsmouth too who works out of the chamber. So I mean everyone will be invited. We're not going to look overlook anyone. Yes, Councillor Marconi. Just want to make sure that the newspapers carry it in a prominent place where everybody in the city will know about it because it isn't just a downtown issue. It's a complete city issue and I think everyone probably would like to be aware of what's coming out. Very good. Any other discussion? You ready for the vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you, Your Honor. The next item uh, deals with the spring tax bill. As you may recall, the City Council requested last year that I work with the Finance Department to create a tax bill that separates local property taxes from the county and statewide property taxes. And what I've done is I've provided you with a pro forma of uh, that uh, bill, which is really two pages, which will go into one envelope. The first page deals with local taxes and gives everybody the net local taxes due uh, for the second half of the year. The second page deals with state, education, and county taxes and tells people what the net state and education county taxes are due for this second half of the year. And we have a section where you would detach and remit the total amount of the two. I think this incorporates what the City Council wanted us to do to try to bring more awareness uh, to the public as to the over-reliance of the statewide property tax uh, on, the, uh, on the property tax uh, rate. And what I'd like to do is ask the Council uh, to approve the format as proposed for the spring tax bill. Uh, do I, yes, Council? I'll, I'll make the motion, Your Honor. I move to approve the format of the proposed 
proposed for the spring tax uh, bill as submitted. Second. Second. All right. Discussion. Uh, yes, is that the revised? The revised one where I've, I've added in a section which actually specifically talks about, because it is the second half bill, we, uh, we basically identify the net local taxes due on that bill, and then the net uh, state education county tax due on that bill, which is really half of the entire bill. Uh, yeah, I think the new format will illuminate uh, just how many tax dollars are leaving the city uh, never to return. So I think it's something the taxpayers uh, should see. Great. Are we all ready for the vote? All in favor? Uh, Aye. I, I, all opposed? Thank you, Ron. And the next item de deals with a report from the back from the planning board regarding an ordinance for Marines, Docks, and Piers. Uh, last year, the city council referred a suggestion from Charles Vaughn that the city adopt an ordinance covering marinas, docks, and piers to the planning board for a report back. As part of its review, the planning board sought input from the conservation committee, commission, excuse me, as well as uh, other regulatory agencies and uh, authority under state statutes. Upon review, the conservation committee uh, determined that there is no need for such an ordinance as the state of New Hampshire and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have regulations affecting piers that may affect the marine environment. Basically, what, what I would like you to do is instruct me. I can send back a letter to Mr. Vaughn indicating the Conservation uh, Commission's uh, uh, findings. So move, Your Honor. Second. All right. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. The next item, Your Honor, uh, deals with the report back from the Planning Board regarding a request to erect a fence on city-owned land at 566 Greenland Road. Uh, the request. Uh, came in on October 21st, 2002. Uh, my uh, memorandum to the City Council is pretty well self-explanatory. Uh, the Planning Board uh, has looked at this extensively along with bringing in the Traffic and Safety Committee, which held a meeting in January and considered the request and denied and deny the request. And the City Council actually acted on those Traffic and Safety Committee minutes at the last meeting. Uh, on February 20th, 2003, the board completed consideration of the request and on a 5-3 vote recommended to the City Council that the request not be granted due to the issue, issue of setting a precedence for use of city property and the future issue of widening New Hampshire 33. A mention was also made of the issue of liability if snow was piled against the fence. And we have a suggested motion to accept the Planning Board's recommendation that the request to erect the fence a city-owned land at 566 Greenland Road be denied. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? Yes. Sure, yes. So I, I was in the minority uh, on the planning board on the 5-3 to three vote. I was in the majority uh, on the planning board in the, in the previous vote <clears throat> that tabled that application. Uh, I think that these people need the city's help, and I think what they're asking for is very reasonable. All of the arguments that have been advanced in opposition to giving these people what they want uh, were addressed in the original planning board hearing. For example, uh, there was an issue of concern about precedent. Uh, I think that the situation is unique and does not establish a precedent because the, the homeowners uh, innocently, in good faith, made a mistake building the beginning of the fence. They discovered that it was not on their property. They immediately addressed the issue with the city. Uh, they agreed that, A, they would remove the fence uh, whenever the road is widened. Uh, they would remove the fence uh, by agreement. If the city ever wanted it to be taken down, they agreed to assume all liability for the fence. They would waive any claim against the city if the fence were damaged. Uh, there was a report about the issue of snow being plowed against the fence. I looked at the report carefully, the report of the Traffic and Safety Committee. I wasn't at all convinced that snow was a problem. Uh, the Shirachs have a little daughter. Uh, they want to have the daughter be uh, safe from the traffic. I think it's just one of those situations where the city can help out these people uh, and there is no downside to this. I feel that uh, They've worked with the city. They've been very patient. This has taken many months to do this. It's a reasonable request, and I don't see any negative impact, any negative precedent, any liability, or any other problem for the city to help these people out. Councilman Marconi. 
Well, I do see something the matter with it, building a fence on the city property. Number two, I don't know why they aren't building a safe, secure yard for their child in the back of their house where they have a tremendous lot, good size lot, which would be fine and safe for a child. I do not feel that we have the right to set a precedent, and it would be setting a precedent to allow them to build on city property. I think we would be stupid to do that, and I think whatever would come on later on down the road would come home to haunt all of us forever in three days. So I couldn't possibly support giving them permission to keep their fence on the city property. Councillor St. Laurent? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, they state in the letter that if the road is widened within a year or two, that they will move the fence then. Why not move it now? Because it's going to be more expensive down the road to move it. And I would think if they know they're going to have to move it eventually, just do it now. I mean, I, I you know, if, if there was a real hardship here, I, I, I don't see it. But, um, you know, it, it might have been okay, but they've already stated they're going to move it. So this, this would be the best time because they're only going to be moving posts now. They're not going to be moving. And, and, it, and it looks the way I see it. And, and plowing the snow up against it or something. If, if somebody were walking down that area, they really couldn't. I know there's a fence, and, I mean, a sidewalk on the other side, but um, I mean, I hate to make an issue out of such a small item, but um, I, I, I will vote for this uh, motion. I'd like to speak to it. The mayor has a chair. I mean, the assistant mayor has assumed the chair and recognizes the mayor. Well, we're talking about presidents here, and uh, there are three other homes that follow in line with yours. I live up there, so I know what Route 33 is all about. It's horrendous. But when I purchased my home, I knew Route 33 was out there, and it's only gotten worse, and it's going to get really worse. Uh, there's three other homes that would love to put a fence up. One has two dogs. She would love to put a fence up. Uh, there's another one that runs a daycare center. So, I mean, I feel if we do it with you, then these other people will come in and want the same thing. So I just, I can't go along with it. Councilor Grasso. Thank you. Um, the, the people have a lot that's three and a half acres, and that's a good sized lot. And it seems to me that there would be a safe area um, in which they could fence for their child. And I, and I, would, I appreciate the need for that. But this, this, um, the posts and the fence they want to erect are within 30, are 13 feet of our property. We're not talking about six inches or even a foot. We're talking 13 feet. And I think that um, land is scarce in Portsmouth, and I, I don't want to feel that we're going to be allowing people to build on city land. Uh, it, it will, it's a touchy subject, it really is, but I just feel the pictures that we had last time really showed the impact of the snow up against that area. We do need to have this, that area for the plows when they come down on uh, Route 33. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to support the planning board's recommendation. Councilor Whitehouse. Uh, yes, this has gone between, before two regulatory boards, the Traffic and Safety Committee plus the planning board. But what has convinced me, and I've heard dialogues from each body, but what has convinced me is the pictures. The pictures uh, tell a thousand words, and we've had a severe winter where the snowplow has deposited the snow up on the side of the road out there, and it is encroaching upon where they have their post already set in place. So I can't see how we can recommend that they be allowed to have a fence on city-owned property at this time. Any further discussion? Any other council uh, wish to be recognized? Assistant Mayor, could I ask that the motion be uh, regressed? City Clerk, please read the motion. Sure. Move to accept the Planning Board's recommendation that the request to arrest a fence on city owned land at 566 Greenland Road be denied. Everybody clear on the motion? Are you ready for the vote? All those in yes. favor say aye. We have a roll call. Please. We have a roll call. A roll call vote has been requested. City Clerk.
Mayor Sorrell? Yes. Councilor Grasso? Yes. Councilor Lowndes? No. Councilor Hines? Yes. Councilor Kenawakis? Yes. Councilor Whitehouse? Yes. Councilor Marconi? Yes. Councilor St. Lawrence? Yes. Assistant Mayor Hansen? Yes. H1 passes? Madam Mayor? Yes. Turn the gavel back over to you. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, now, John, he has some informationals on there. John, did you want to talk about any of them? Yes, Your Honor. Just quickly, I'll go over a couple of them. Just a reminder that tomorrow that we will be meeting with the high school students uh, at uh, 11 uh, a.m. in the Culinary Arts Room to do a little preparation for Student Government Day, uh, which has been scheduled for Thursday, March 27th. In addition, I'd like to remind the City Council that we have a work session next Monday night on the Capital Improvement Plan for 2004 through 2009. That will commence at 6.30 p.m. in Conference Room A. Also, I'd like to bring to the City Council attention that the uh, Portsmouth Listens, who's, who are working with us on the Master Plan update, will be making a presentation to the Planning Board on April 3rd, and they invite everybody to attend that. It's beginning at 6.30 p.m. Uh, with the study circles making their presentations. If you cannot attend, we encourage you to tune in to Channel 22 for those presentations. In addition, uh, there will be a, a second meeting to kick off Phase 2 of the study circles process at Yokins at 7 p.m. on April 15th. That's all I have, Your Honor, unless there are any questions of me. Any questions of uh, the City Manager, Harold, and then Bill? Yes. Uh, John, you forgot one very important uh, meeting, and that's tomorrow night, Coast, at the library, 7 o'clock, informational meeting about the extension of, uh, of the line down Lafayette Road, south on Lafayette Road. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I might just continue. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, there is a... Uh, an informational workshop at the city's library at 6 p.m. That's right. Yep. And it will deal with the Route 1 uh, uh, trolley service that will commence hopefully this spring. Yep. And everybody's I'm, encouraged I'm, to. I'm not sure of that time, Your uh, you know, Honor. I, I think it's 7. I think it's 7. I'm not sure. But you can check on that. Okay. Um, Bill? Just informational, Your Honor. Uh, the meeting on Thursday the 3rd, what was the time place again? That you mentioned. The time for the study circles, they are going to commence here in the council chambers uh, with their presentations at 6.30 p.m. I have one of the, uh, the, uh, the leaders here tonight, so I think I'm correct on that, right, Jim? Okay. Thank you, Ron. All right. Any other discussion or questions of John? Uh, Harold? Yes. In reference to the library historical issue, section 106, and uh, you had a correspondent that went to the... Uh, the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, have you received any uh, response? Not at this letter? time, Councilor. Yeah. The date of that was on the 24th. It was sent out February 24th. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Then I guess we're to the mayor. Get my act together here. There. Uh, okay. We've already done the resolution which was a unanimous vote, and I thank each one of you. Um, we're down to appointments. First appointment for consideration is for the Conservation Commission, Alan H. Uh, Sturgis, and I want you all to look to the bottom of your page and the annual number of meetings were 10, and he was absent at none of them. The next one is a consideration uh, for library trustee, and uh, her name is Suzanne Foley. We'll be voting on her in two weeks. We'll let our next council meeting. Uh, to be voted on tonight, planning board alternate, Jerry J. Hickmont. I'm getting it. Boy, I'm getting it. Uh, do I have uh, some of Geronimo? Some of Geronimo. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Is this All the first vote. one we're voting on, Your Honor? Yes. What was that? We're not voting on Alan Sturgis. No. No, he's down 
for consideration. Oh, all right. And so is Suzanne Foley, the library trustee. Okay. And as I have repeated to each one of you, if you have any questions in your mind on any applications that I bring forward and you disagree with, let me know. Your Honor? Yes. Excuse me. Uh, did we vote on Suzanne Foley just now? No. Oh, oh okay. that's a consideration. Okay. Consideration, right. Okay, now we're down to be voted on Portsmouth Housing Endowment Fund Board, Jeffrey Montjoy. So move. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. To be voted on for the Blue Ribbon Committee on Trees and Public Greenery, Richard G. Adams. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. To be voted on Blue Ribbon Committee on Trees and Public Greenery, Peter Lachlan. So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, that takes care of the mayor. And now we're down to uh, miscellaneous. Does anyone have any miscellaneous? I'd like a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Do I have a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed.